Hi folks, in this video we're going to continue to examine conditional probability and we're going to do so by looking at three different scenarios. A um, couple different ways you could go through this video. You can either, I'm going to present each scenario, you can either pause the video, work through it on your own, and then look at the solution with me, or we can just work through it all together and so you don't have to pause. Let's take a look at the first scenario. So, still looking at conditional probability. Here's our first scenario. You are running an email marketing campaign. And you begin by emailing 1 million customers. Of those 1 million that you email, 50,000 click the link in your email. And among those, 1,000 actually make a purchase based on this email campaign. So you email a million people, only 1,000 make a purchase. Question is, if an email recipient clicks the link, what is the likelihood that they will make a purchase? email recipient clicks the link, what's the likelihood they'll make a purchase? I think a lot of you will be able to just work this out in your heads and say, well, we know that 50,000 clicked the link and of those 50,000, 1,000 made a purchase. So that's just going to say, so the probability of someone making a purchase after they've clicked the link is just 1,000 over 50,000. That just makes sense. And that's going to be equal to 2%. So 2% likelihood, if they click the link, then they'll make a purchase. That's also known as the conversion rate in business terms. Let's think about you know, th this from, from the conditional probability perspective. We can call this event A, and we can call making the purchase event B. And so what we're really saying is probability of B making a purchase, given that they clicked the link, is what we're trying to find out. The probability of B given A, probability of making a purchase if they click the link, is going to be equal to, we're just using our standard equation here, probability of B intersection A, the intersection of A and B, over the probability of A. So, probability of B, uh, probability of the intersection of A and B is going to be equal to 1,000, that's sort of like a K, divided by 1 million, and probability of A is 50,000 divided by 1 million. Does that make sense to everybody? We got 1,000 over 1 million. Making a purchase means you've clicked the link and you've made a purchase. That's, um, that's the intersection right there, is you've done both, both events have happened. You've made a purchase and you clicked the link, and 1,000 out of our 1 million made that. So that's our total outcomes we're looking for is the people who made a purchase over total possible outcomes, which is 1 million. Uh, and then for pr probability of event A happening here, it's just 50,000. Just 50,000 out of that million click the link. So it's 50,000 over 1 million. A little bit of cancellation. We get 1,000 over 50,000, which is the exact same thing we got over here, so 2%. Now, I think most of you probably got this just it just made sense to you, uh, and that's good. But, you know, the other way, I, I think that it, some of you, some more of you might have been more confused by this if I presented it slightly differently. Let's use a bigger eraser, get this thing done faster. You know, I only have to mouse over it once. I only have to move over it once with this eraser, but I still rub. I, I just can't get out of the habit. It's funny. All right, so what if I change this to 5% click the link and 0.1% make a purchase? Now, most of you are probably looking at this and saying, that is the exact same scenario. It's true, it really is. It's the exact same scenario. No difference here, but I think based on experience, I see a lot of students who get confused when we start talking about percentages, when we start talking about probabilities or fractions, they like using whole numbers better. But it really makes no difference. This is ex exactly what we were doing earlier. We're just saying it's going to be 0.1% divided by 5%. If an e email recipient clicks this link, well, that's 5%. What is the likelihood that they will make a purchase? 0.1%. And so that's going to be equal to, this is also known as 0.001 divided by 0.05, which is going to be equal to 0.02, which is equal to 2%. So whether we're talking about fractions or we're talking about whole numbers, it all works out the exact same way.
All right, let's move on to our next scenario. Our next scenario deals with a bike shop. So you operate a bike shop and you know that of the customers who walk into your store, 40% of them are going to purchase a bike. Seems pretty good. 25% um, of the customers who walk into your store are going to buy a helmet. And 20, I said 25% buy a helmet, I think. 20% of your, the customers who walk in are going to buy both a helmet and a bike. First question, if a walk-in customer buys a bike, what is the probability of that customer also buying a helmet? Right. So, hopefully most of you identified this as a conditional probability problem, um, if not by the title of the video, but then by the wording of the question itself. Let's assign events to these things. We're gonna call this, um, you know what, I'm gonna, we've been using A and B, but let's, I think it'll make more sense if we call this event B, and we call this event H. And down here, the 20% probability of buying both, hopefully you all realize that is the intersection of B and H. So this is B intersect H. That's the probability, that's the probability of, of someone buying a helmet and a bike, otherwise known as B and H. So I'm gonna scoot down the page a little bit here to give us some more room. Walking customer buys a bike, what is the probability of them also buying a helmet? This is conditional probability. This is saying, what is the probability of helmet given bike? The condition is they are buying a bike. That's happening. So now we want to know if they are buying a bike, what's the probability of them buying a helmet? And the equation for conditional probability is P H intersection B, which is going to this the exact same thing as this, over probability of b. All right, we have everything that we need to solve this equation. P, the intersection here, this is the intersection of helmet and bike, is going to be 0.2 to 20%, and P of b is 0.4. So divide that out and we get 50%. What's the likelihood of someone buying a helmet? If we know that they're buying a bike, 50%. 50% of the people come in and buy a bike are also gonna buy a helmet. Some people are just gonna buy a helmet on their own, but that's different. All right. So, second question is, are we buying a helmet, or sorry, are buying a helmet and buying a bike independent? We have a couple of different equations that we can use to figure this out. Number one, Going back to, you know, this is all related to conditional probability, we have this equation. If they are independent, H given B should be equal to probability of H, right? Because it shouldn't matter. This is a question mark, sort of a question mark. It shouldn't matter that B is a condition, right? If they're independent, they have no influence on each other. So the fact that they've bought a bike shouldn't influence whether they're buying a helmet. Does this hold true? Well, we just figured out that P, sorry, the probability of H given B is 50%. So I'm gonna replace this with 50% down here. Question is, does that equal the probability of buying a helmet, which is 25%? No, that does not work out. Uh, there's another equation we could use. This was from the video on independent events. We said probability of the intersection of H and B, does this equal probability of H times the probability of B? If they're independent events, you can just multiply them together without adjusting anything, and you're gonna get the intersection. This is like rolling a red die, rolling a white die. Say, what's the probability of rolling a three on the red and a six on the white? One sixth times one sixth. That's the intersection, it works, one thirty sixth. It's the exact same thing. Does this work? What is the prob what is the intersection? Hmm, running out of room. Intersection of bike and helmet is 20%. Sorry, I'm switching back and forth between. In fact, let me be more consistent. I'll go with percentages here. Does this equal helmet times bike? Helmet is 25%, bike is 
So is that, do, do, do those things come out equal? I think 25% times 40% is actually equal to 10%. So no, again, we are justified in our assumption that, uh, or not assumption, our proof that these events are not independent. They are dependent events. All right, on to scenario number three. In scenario number three, you operate a grocery store chain. We have information about our customers. We know that 30% of our customers use a rewards card on a weekly basis. 75% of the customers who shop weekly use a rewards card. And 60% of all customers use a rewards card. What percentage of the chain's customers shop weekly? Huh. This is trickier. This is the hardest one. I saved it for last. Let's think about what we've got here. We've got some information. I'm going to go with the simplest seeming information first. That is this third bullet here. 60% of all customers use a rewards card. All right. We're going to call this A, using a rewards card, 60%. We know P of A is 0.6. That seems to make sense. Now it says, I'm going to go back to the top, to, to, to the first bullet. 30% of customers use a rewards card on a weekly basis. And, okay, so it seems like we have another event here. Uh, based on these two bullets, 30% of customers use a rewards card on a weekly basis and 75% of customers who shop weekly use a rewards card. We're missing something here. And I'm going to call it B. I'm going to add it in here. This is some unknown percentage of customers who shop weekly. And that's what we're looking for. We want to know what percentage of the customers shop weekly. We have to figure this out. That's, that's event B. So let's look at what other information we have up here. We know that 30% of customers use a rewards card on a weekly basis. Let's think about what this is telling us. 30% of customers use a rewards card on a weekly basis. So they both are rewards cards users and they're weekly shoppers. The and being the key here. This is A intersection B. It's A and B, both happening at once. Now that just leaves us with one other bullet and this is the toughest bullet to interpret. Let's think about this. 75% of customers who shop weekly use a rewards card. 75% of customers who shop weekly use a rewards card. So we're saying these are the customers who do shop weekly and we know that 75% of them use a rewards card. That sure sounds like a conditional statement to me. What's the given here? What's the condition? Well, it's that they shop weekly. We're saying those who do shop weekly, meaning that's our, that's who, that's our condition, they shop weekly. Those who do, 75% use a rewards card. So this is going to be A given B, B being weekly customers. So A given B. And we have a lot of information. We have a, I think we have enough information to go off of. So let's put down our first equation that we know for conditional probability. A given B, probability of A given B, is going to be equal to probability of A intersection B over probability of B. A. We know two out of the three of these variables, therefore we can solve. So down here, A given B, well, that's just up here. It's 0.75. I'll say 75%. And this up here, I really could have given myself more room. A and B, A intersection B. Forgive me. Keep things as percentages. Is 30%. So what's our denominator going to be down here? Well, we can cross multiply. Um, and what you're going to get is 40%. 30, 30 over 40 is equal to 
75%. Therefore, this number right here, we know that 40% of customers shop weekly. So what percent of the Jane's customers shop weekly? 40%. Now, you'll notice here, there's, an, there's a piece of information that we didn't use at all. Why not? Percentage of customers who use a rewards card, 60%. Does that matter to us? Not to figure out the percentage of the customers who shop weekly. All we needed to know was, was with the first two bullets. So this right here, this is a red herring. I'm not saying it wouldn't be useful to us in the operation of our grocery store chain, but as far as solving this problem, don't need it at all. All right, that does it for conditional probability.